everyone! Welcome to Water Bear Reads, where I usually discuss illustrated classics and modern classics. My name is Heather. Welcome! Today I'm going to do something a little different. Um, for the first time since starting my YouTube channel, I find myself with a gap in video plans. I have all kinds of ideas for December through pretty much April, but I just didn't quite know what to do during this time of the year before Christmas, before the holidays start. And so I thought that I would do a video that I have really been feeling like I needed to do for um, quite a while. And that is a sort of introductory uh, video where I introduce myself and my channel and my favorite books or books that have changed my life. I wanted to do it so that it wasn't a video where I just spent the entire time talking about myself and my channel. I wanted to add books in as well because I know we're all here for the books, right? We just want to see the books. I began looking around for tags that I could use and none of them really fit the type of conversation I was looking to have. So I decided to think of something different and because I am such a lover of lists and structured reading and <laughs> I, d I came up with this idea to chat about books that have changed my life within the context of Booker's seven different plot themes. And then because there were other books that I really loved and I really wanted to talk about that I just didn't feel like they really fit, I decided to come up with a few more of my own. So I'm going to tell you guys about those and I'll explain each of the plots as I go along and then show you my favorite ones, my favorite books. This will be different from my usual. I won't go into too much detail about the illustrators in this video because it's really just about getting to know my, me and my channel. Before I get started with the book talk, I'm going to put my coffee down for a second. I filled it really full so I'm afraid I'll spill it. So my channel's name is Water Bear Reads. My name is Heather, Heather Tribe, and I decided to name my channel Water Bear Reads because Heather Tribe is a YouTube cooking channel. <laughs> so, and then also because Water Bear Reads is the name of my website. So a water bear is another name for a tardigrade, and a tardigrade is a micro animal that can survive in the most extreme environments. Not unlike classics that make it through time, make it through political unrest, make it through wars. And so the name water bear came to mind. Water bear also kind of reminds me of Waterstones, which is one of my favorite bookstores. And also the bear and water bear kind of relates it to children, which even though I do talk about classics in general, adult classics as well, I do tend to talk more about children's classics simply because those tend to be the ones that are mostly illustrated. So how did I get here? So I met my husband, James, at Comic-Con. Um, we were at San Diego Comic-Con and we met standing in line, a line that ended up being six hours long <laughs> and then we didn't even get in. <laughs> but that's how we met. We stood next to each other in line and I'll tell you what we were waiting to get in in a minute when I'm talking about the books. He had been really involved in the limited edition poster print world. He had been living in Austin, Texas and there's a, a sort of leader in the industry that is located in Austin, Texas, Mondo. I think it's called Mondo's Prints and Tees, technically, something like that, but I just always call it Mondo. And he had really been in the art scene, and when I met him, he started introducing me to that world. I really fell in love with it. I started following blogs, I started getting to know the different artists. We would go to different art shows all over the country, New York and San Francisco, and of course, Austin, Texas as well. I just started really developing a feel for my favorite artists, for the styles that I liked, and started collecting. We live in a petite two-bedroom, Cape that's somewhat farmhousey and somewhat Maine cottage on the outskirts of a town in northern Maine. And every wall in our house is full of poster prints and artwork. And it's kind of fun too whenever we see one of our favorites illustrate a book. Like for example, when my son was born, I bought Jonathan Burton's E.T. And it's been so wonderful to see how many of Folio Society's illustrated books are done by Jonathan Burton. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and there's uh, Northanger Abbey, and several others. Another illustrator that is actually a favorite of my husband's is Nicholas Delort, and we were thrilled to see that he just illustrated the new Hunger Games, the new illustrated Hunger Games book. His artwork 
adorns our walls every holiday season because we take out his work. He, we have a couple of posters that we put up that are from Nicolas Delort or Nico Delort for short. When I had my son, I couldn't keep up with it as much. When you want to collect limited edition artwork, you have to be on top of things, you have to be quick to the punch, you have to be able to uh, be online, have everything set up, be quick with your fingers to, in order to purchase things because they sell out so quickly. And so I just couldn't keep up. When you have a young child, it just becomes much more difficult to be on top of things like that. But about that time, we started opening our world to picture books and my interest kind of naturally switched from the limited edition poster print world to picture book illustration. I actually began reading classics to my child <laughs> when he was an infant. I would just read a chapter every day while he was playing or laying or resting or feeding or whatever because I wanted to introduce words. I have a list in his baby book which I meant to go and get so I could show you. Hang on, I will go get that one second. One, one second, I'll be back. So I have my baby book here, my son's baby book I mean, and so I'm just gonna read you quickly. Um, the first book I ever read to him was The Hobbit then followed by Journey to the Center of the Earth, Huckleberry Finn, The Last Unicorn, The Princess Bride, The Neverending Story, Captain's Courageous, and The Martian. It was kind of a nice way to get some reading in while at the same time having my son hear words and language. Of course, he doesn't remember any of these, but as time went on and he got older, I started reading classics to him and I picked up The Wind in the Willows and I picked up this version of The Wind in the Willows actually. It had been a gift from my mom and it's beautifully illustrated by Nancy Barnhart which a lot of people think she's the original illustrator but she actually is a third illustrator. I just did an illustrator explore on this classic. It's on my website if you wanted to check it out. She was the first person to put the animals in clothing. The problem is is there's not that many of them and we really had a hard time getting through this book. And then I started looking around and I realized how many illustrated versions there were and it was just something that hadn't occurred to me. And so ever since then, every time I would pick up a classic to read to my son, I would first try to see what all the illustrative versions that you could pick from out there in the world and choose the best one that worked for us. But there was never a one-stop shop that I could go to, never one place that I could go to. So I just decided to make one. <laughs> and that's how Water Bear Reads began. So I take a classic and I explore all the illustrated versions that are out on the market, even the ones that are out of print, and I just take pictures of them, list them where it's possible, I put links, and hopefully it's helpful to some people and helps them find the right versions to read to their kids or their grandkids, or even if they're collectors, if they just want to you know, find the right version. So at this time, when I had been um, doing my website, I had no idea that there was anything like Bookstagram, or booktube, it was completely off my radar. I didn't know anything about it. And then one day, a good friend of mine, my friend Erica said, you should try Instagram. So I got on Instagram and I got started with that. And then at the same time, my cousin David sent me a link to Pete Beard because Pete Beard discusses illustrators. And I started watching Pete Beard, fell in love with his channel. And from there on, I started finding more booktubers. I started realizing, wow, there's a whole world of <laughs> people who talk about books. You'd actually be amazed how many people out there have no idea that there is such a thing as booktube. In my daily life, when I, when I talk to people, when I tell people that people are on YouTube talking about books, they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people out there that have no idea. I love reading, but I also love researching books. I just love researching books. It is my favorite thing to do. It is the most relaxing activity in my life to have a, a hot chocolate or a coffee and just research books. I can go down a rabbit hole looking for things. I tend to find an illustrator and then I look up what other books an illustrator has illustrated and the illustrators tend to guide me on my journey. And I thought how fun it would be to hop on YouTube and talk about the illustrated versions. I, I, I circulate the types of videos I do. I do a read a book by the decade video. I do illustrator explore videos. I do collections video. My next video will be a collections video. And, and I do book hauls. 
and then every now and then I fit in an extra video like I did at the top of the year I did beyond this classic there be dragons and I talked about all the classics and my favorite classics that have dragons in them and then I'm doing this video so every now and then I want to fit in a video that's just a little different um, so yeah that is the skinny um, I I hope that that has helped you get to know me a little bit better so now I'm going to have a sip of coffee and then I'm going to get into the plot themes and show you my favorite books and the books that have changed my life in each plot theme so let me take a sip of my coffee and we'll get started so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to read about the plot type and then I will put my laptop down and then I will show you the book. So the first one we have tragedy. In a tragic story, the protagonist typically experiences suffering and downfall. The plot of the tragedy almost always includes a reversal of fortune from good to bad or happy to sad. My favorite book of this plot type is The Great Gatsby. I love The Great Gatsby. I of course read it when I was in high school like so many of us but I didn't really catch on to it then. And then when I read it this year, earlier this year, it was just the most amazing read. I knew I was gonna have a good relationship with this author when I read the first couple of lines of the story. They go, in my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. I had seen the movie, of course, as well, and I have to say that I couldn't stand Daisy Buchanan. I thought she was the worst character that I had ever heard about in literature. And after reading this book, I understand Daisy more. I understand her motivations. So that was what was another thing that was wonderful about reading this book. But it's just the prose, the Fitzgerald's way of expressing. It's set in the summertime in New York and the surrounds, um, Long Island. And it follows the life of Jay Gatsby, who is in love with Daisy Buchanan and has structured his entire life around the hopes of winning her back. The prose are gorgeous. The way that they describe um, the emotions of people and the reactions of people to certain things and uh, being set in the jazz age in the 1920s. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful story. I will probably talk more about this illustrated version. I've kind of been holding this one off because I know that this will be in my top 10 books of the year. <laughs> so I'll talk about this illustrated version from the Balbuso twins in another video. But yes, Tragedy, my favorite book is The Great Gatsby. If you were to ask me for a runner up, I would probably say the, the Thornbirds. I haven't read The Thornbirds in a very long time. Nonetheless, I remember the story making such an impression on me. So now for the next one, comedy. In a comedic story, the ending is generally not tragic. Though characters in comic plots may be flawed, their outcomes are not usually painful or destructive. The book that has changed my life that is a comedy is The Princess Bride. I love this book so much. I've spoken about this book several times on this channel. I laughed and laughed. I love the author's side notes. I love his side conversations. I love the backstories of the characters and the way that the characters interact with each other and the way that in so many of the, the things are terrifying, but they're also so funny. I highly recommend it. If you're a fan of the movie, the book is just like the movie and then some. All the wonderful bits that you see in the movie are in the book and then you also get the backstories of all the different characters as well. So yeah, I would say The Princess Bride. If you ask me for a runner-up in this category, I'd say Don Quixote, but I feel like I don't have a right to mention Don Quixote because I have only read a condensed version. <laughs> You can very quickly see, even in a shortened version, how a book that was written back in the 1600s has had such an effect on slapstick comedy, even of today. I would laugh and laugh and laugh at some of the things that I saw happening in that book, knowing that I've seen them on screen a million times. And it's just, it's kind of amazing to read such a book that was written so long ago. So yes, yeah, so that, I feel like I can't really get into Don Quixote because I did only read a condensed version of it. I mean, it was still pretty thick. It was still, you know, 
separate. And another reason why I read the condensed version is I was, of course, looking for an illustrated version. And I actually made a mistake and thought it was the original version, but it was a condensed version. It was still quite thick. For the next plot, we have Journey of the Hero. In general, the plot of a hero's journey features two elements, recognition and a situation reversal. Typically, something happens from the outside to inspire the hero, bringing about recognition and realization. Then, the hero undertakes a quest to solve or reverse the situation. This was a very easy one for me, and it is and will always be The Last Unicorn. I love Peter Beagle's The Last Unicorn. I've read it more times than I can say. I have this old version that is illustrated. Every year I hope and hope and hope that an affordable illustrated, full color illustrated version will be made available. But for now I have these beautiful illustrations and I forgot to tell you guys, I'm not really talking about illustrators in this video, but it's Mel Grant. I, so is the illustrator of The Last Unicorn. This one is covered in plastic because when I got it, I was going through my covering my books in plastic phase. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's the kind of plastic that really sticks, so it's, it's on there. <laughs> but yeah, my favorite book. So for those of you who don't know the story, a unicorn in the forest realizes that she's the last unicorn. She hears it from a butterfly and she goes on a quest to find other unicorns in the world. And it's just a beautiful story that explores the theme of how you relate to the world and where your place is in the world. It's a story of courage. It's a story of love. There's so many themes in this book that are amazing and delightful and the writing is gorgeous. I've read a few of Peter Beagle's works when I was younger and that's one of the things that I would like to start doing this year is reading several of his works. Next we have Rebirth. This plot type generally features a character's transformation from bad to good. Typically, the protagonist carries their tragic past with them, which results in negative views of life and poor behavior. The transformation occurs when events in the story help them see a better worldview. So I have two in this category, and I really couldn't choose between them. The first one is Jack London's White Fang. I love White Fang. This particular um, plot type is the most affecting for me. These are the books that usually have me crying at the end <laughs> for some reason. Um, when I read White Thing, I was crying at the end. It was just so beautiful. It's about a wolf that has been mistreated. He fears humans. He resents humans. He's been put in dog fights. He's been just really has had a really bad run. And then he meets a man who changes everything and they become friends. And oh my gosh, even now I just want to cry. And the wolf White Fang um, learns to trust humans. Okay, I need to take a minute. Excuse me. So I'm back. I think I've got a hold of myself. <laughs> Where was I? So White Fang meets a man who changes the projection of his life. It was beautifully written. Jack London really could get inside the mind of an animal. Very good. I, When I finished this, I recommended it to like every person I spoke to. I found this beautiful version. Um, I did an Illustrator Explore on White Fang. I loved it so much. And it's one of my smaller Illustrator Explorers. But there are some really beautiful ones. There's one by, I think her name is Lydia Dabovich. I'm probably saying it incorrectly, but I would like to get a hold of uh, that version. I think it's published by Heritage Press. But I did really like this one, illustrated by James Masden, and this is an Usborne um, Illustrated Classics edition, and it's just got the most beautiful illustrations. If you haven't read White Fang, it's a great one to read in the winter too. And then the second one, which is equally as affecting to me, is a book that comes from my years that I spent in South Africa. I was raised in America, but for about four or five years of my life, I spent in South Africa. And it is Sotsi by Ethel Fugard. I was so proud because uh, South Africa won the foreign film Oscar one year, and it was for the production of Sotsi. So I read the book, and the book was even more beautiful than the film. Sotsi is the Sotsi name for a thug. And, and this baby ends up having such an effect on him and changing his outlook on life. 
I highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet. It's not illustrated, but it is just a wonderful book. Rags to Riches. In this common plot type, the protagonist begins in an impoverished, downtrodden, or struggling state. Then, story events take place, magical or realistic, that lead to the protagonist's success and usually a happy ending. I have two favorites of this plot type. I think I will not be alone in sh saying that Pride and Prejudice <laughs> is probably my favorite rags to riches story. I love Jane Austen. Uh, Persuasion is a very close second to Pride and Prejudice. Those are my two favorites, followed by Sense and Sensibility. I love her writing. It's just beautiful. I always feel so happy after I finish a Jane Austen novel. The other one would also be another one that everybody knows about, and that is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I have loved Charlie and the Chocolate Factory since I was a very young kid. And every single time I read this book, watch the movie, I feel nothing but joy. It is just such a wonderful tale. I really love the character of Charlie Bucket and I love Wonka himself, and I love the character of all the other children as well. I just think they're hilarious. So the next plot type is Overcoming the Monster. This plot type features a generally good protagonist that fights a typically evil antagonist. However, both the protagonist and antagonist can be groups of characters rather than simply individuals, all with the same goal or mission. So I have a few books on this list, but I want to talk about one that is my favorite book of all time. I'm not quite sure if Jane Eyre would count as Overcoming the Beast or if it would fit into Rags to Riches, but I just had to mention Jane Eyre in between these two plots or as one of them because I just love it so much. The other book that is very high up in this category for me is The Never Ending Story. And of course, the beast that they're overcoming is the nothing. Bastion has to save an entire world from something called the nothing simply by believing in himself. It is so beautiful. It is so well written. I'm holding up a German version. This one is illustrated by Sebastian Mischenmoser. When, when we were reading The Never Ending Story, I supplemented the pictures in one version with the pictures in this so that we could get some really great illustration coverage. It's a great book to read this time of year uh, because it starts on a very rainy cold day in November. And the final book I actually own, it is somewhere, I thought that I had put it aside for this video. It is Cry the Beloved Country by Alan Patton. I love that book and of course the beast in that book is apartheid. It, it was just so beautifully written, tugged at the heartstrings. It's one of those books that every now and then I just page through just to read some of the language. It's just beautiful. The next plot type is The Voyage and Return. In this plot type, the main character goes from point A to point B and back to point A. In general, the protagonist sets off on a journey and returns to the start of their voyage, having gained wisdom and or experience. So this one will be no big surprise, The Hobbit. And the reason it is The Hobbit is this book literally changed my life. It is the reason I'm here today. Because what my husband and I were standing in line to see when we first met and we were in line for six hours was Peter Jackson's discussion of his making of the film, The Hobbit. And it was to have all the cast in it, the cast were involved. We were standing in line for Hall H at San Diego Comic-Con. If you've ever been to San Diego Comic-Con, you know Hall H, especially on Saturday, is the place to be. And we stood in line for six hours and we did not get in, but we met each other. <laughs> now we have a son and I am here today because of this book. So I had to mention this book. And of course, it's wonderful. We did another reread of The Hobbit this year. I have a couple of um, illustrated versions of The Hobbit, but I really love this one by Jemima Catlin. J.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit is definitely one in this category. I do have a second one. Jules Verne, Journey to the Center of the Earth. I read this to my son when he was young. Except for the fact that this actually isn't the book in its entirety. I don't have a copy of Journey to the Center of the Earth. I need to get one. Um, because this is actually my son's finding book. So we keep this copy of a book on our bookshelves. And every now and then, it's kind of, it's a magical book. And every now and then, he will go to it and open it, and there will be sweets inside or small little toys inside. I don't know how they get there. It's a magic book. Anyway, but 
it was made out of journey to the center of the earth. So those were the seven plot types according to Booker. But there were other books that I really wanted to mention and I just didn't quite feel like they fit into any of the plot types. So I decided to add a few more and those are Coming of Age, Mystery slash Revenge because they kind of have the same structure and Slice of Life. I'm going to start with the coming of age. So here is a definition of coming of age. Coming of age focuses on the growth and development of a protagonist from childhood to adulthood. It highlights the experiences, challenges, and personal growth that accompany this important life stage. So I have three books in this category. Of course, Anna Green Gables. I can't leave out Anna Green Gables. I've read Anna Green Gables more time than I can mention. I've read the entire series and then I've turned around and read it again when I was little. I loved Anne. That is my favorite coming of age story. Closely followed by two others and perhaps even maybe equal is The Power of One by Bryce Courtney. This is another book set in South Africa. It's about PK and PK is um, small for his age. He, his parents are unable to look after him so he gets sent to a boarding school and he gets bullied a lot in this boarding school and he meets some people along the way who become support for him as, as well as a chicken. <laughs> there's a chicken in here the chicken really becomes his pet and I just love that relationship between PK and the chicken but he eventually decides that he wants to become a boxing champion and he starts training he wants to be welterweight champion of the world I suppose this could also perhaps fit into overcoming the monster but I really felt like it was more of a coming-of-age story learning to love yourself become the person that you're going to be and if you haven't read The Power of One, I highly recommend it. And then finally, the last book in this category that I had to mention is Bambi, The Story of Life in the Forest. It's about a young deer who loses his mom and his father teaches him how to survive in the forest. And it's just beautiful. It is some of the most gorgeous writing that I have read, not for children. It's kind of a foreshadowing of the war and the Nazis that are to come. It's very interesting to read it after the benefit of history. Already at that stage there was a lot of hatred towards Jews in Europe and things were starting to change already when this book was written. And I highly recommend this version. It has a wonderful introduction that talks about all of this and beautiful illustrations throughout. This was my top read of last year and I just really love it. Highly recommend it. The next plot type that I thought about and decided to include was the mystery and revenge plot type and I decided to combine them because I thought it would be good to keep it an even 10. <laughs> so let me read the mystery. In a mystery the plot revolves around a puzzling event, situation, or crime that needs to be solved. Key elements of a mystery story include a crime, typically a murder, a detective, professional or amateur, tasked with solving the crime, a list of potential suspects, each with a motive. Dark, mysterious events, suspects, and unexpected twists are common in mystery stories. I've been rereading the Nancy Drew series and really loving going back to those vintage stories that I read when I was little. We moved around so much in my life, in my childhood, and had many different homes. But there was one home in my life that was a stable place to go to and that was my grandparents house. And on their shelves were so many wonderful books. I have sort of my memories attached to all the books that were on their shelves and Nancy Drew's were one of them and Nancy Drew's and the Bobsy Twins. So I've been slowly rereading those. And the other one is Agatha Christie. I just love Agatha Christie's books. Sleeping Murder which I read earlier this year and Nemesis which I'm almost done. I've been reading this one. I've been loving both of them. But I just in general love Agatha Christie. I've also been collecting these. I think I showed you guys these not too long ago. I read a ton when I was young. I think my very favorite is And Then There Were None, which I don't have a copy of. But that was the one that I think stands out the most in my memory. So then revenge. A revenge story is a type of dramatic writing in which a person tries to pay back for the moral or physical harm done to their loved ones. So my favorite book in this category I do not have, but it is The Count of Monte Cristo. I went through a period in my young adulthood where I just read every new book that came out, any new release book that was coming out, I was on top of it. 
And after a while, I kind of started to grow bored and I started to think about reading classics again. And I started with The Count of Monte Cristo. It was so easy to read and it really gave me that confidence to continue on. And I attribute The Count of Monte Cristo for giving me that feeling that I can read classics. And I love the characters, I love the plot. I mean, Alexandre Dumas just does the most amazing stories. He's so good at carving out a good, solid story with good, solid characters. And yeah, so I would say The Count of Monte Cristo. So now we are at the final plot type that I made up. <laughs> that, um, and that is called The Slice of Life. A slice of life story presents a seemingly arbitrary sample of a character's life which often lacks a coherent plot, conflict, or ending. It depicts everyday experiences in a naturalistic manner, focusing on the mundane aspects of life, often without a conventional plot or dramatic climax. So I have two on this list, and the second one I'm not 100% sure fits into it, but I'm going to mention it anyway. But the first one is The Wind in the Willows. I love The Wind in the Willows. As I explained to you before, this has a lot to do with my journey of illustrated classics and reading to my son. I collect versions of this book more than any other classic, especially now since I just did the Illustrator Explore. I have a ton of them. I had, I had this really magical experience where I was reading the chapter titled The Piper at the Gates of Dawn and I was sitting actually right where I was at the time. We had a really big love sack <laughs> right here. And I was reading it and there's a window right over there across from me. And I hit the part where I was reading about the sunrise right at the time when the sun shone right through the window. <laughs> and it was just such a magical experience for me. And since that time, I have just had such a love for that chapter. Second one and the final one that I have to mention is The Jungle Book, particularly the second Jungle Book. You have to read the first Jungle Book to really get the feeling of the second Jungle Book. But the second Jungle Book is one of the most beautiful books I have ever read. Even the stories that are not concerning Mowgli are beautiful. Some of them are eerie, but they're just wonderful. Rudyard Kipling, he can write. And the second Jungle Book is when Mowgli is deciding that he is going to go join the man village and he's leaving his friends. And oh my gosh, this was another experience where I was just crying. It was beautiful, beautifully written. I went to go visit Rudyard Kipling's home in uh, Vermont. Um, it was my first vlog, actually, um, if you haven't seen it. And at the very end of the vlog part, I actually um, quote one of the last lines in the Jungle Book. I love the relationship between Mowgli and the wolves and Baloo and Bagheera. And in the second book, you come to understand the relationship that Mowgli has with Ka. He and that snake, really hit it off and Ka sort of becomes um, almost a mother, a protector, a best friend to Mowgli. Um, they go on adventures together, they have um, scary experiences together. It's so good. If you have not read the second Jungle Book, you really need to read it. it this is, by the way, a really pretty version. And also in that video, I talk about several versions of the Jungle Book, this one included if you're interested. Because it's nonfiction November, I wanted to show you a nonfiction that has been my favorite nonfiction of all time. And that is this National Geographic book, Our World. This is kind of like my Jane Eyre. You know how she has her book. This is my relationship with this book. I remember when I was a little girl just sitting in the living room, paging through this book that had tons of pictures about our world, there's Sweden and Finland and Norway and maps and flags and a lot of it is probably now outdated and there's so much that's probably changed now. But it was just, it was kind of like my Jane Eyre book where I would dream about the places I wanted to visit, the places I wanted to go. Well, that is it. I hope you have enjoyed this getting to know me a little better introductory video. 
let me know in the comments what your favorite plot type is and within that plot type what your favorite book is i'd really be curious to know before i go i just want to say a massive thank you to all my new subscribers who subscribed to my channel this autumn it means so much to me and an even greater expression of gratitude is due to those subscribers of mine who watch my videos and enjoy my videos and comment on my videos and interact it really boosts my creative um, energy when you do that. And I just wanted to say thank you so much. It means a lot to me. We are excited this year to be traveling to New Mexico for Thanksgiving. The past few Thanksgivings have just been the three of us. This year, it'll be so wonderful. We'll be seeing my mom and my brother who also lives in the area. And it'll be so nice to have my mom's cooking. We turn on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and the season does not begin for me until I see Santa Claus on that float. When I see him on that float, the Christmas season has begun. <laughs> I always look forward to that moment when he comes out on the Christmas float. I'll be back soon with another video. And until then, I hope you have a lovely Thanksgiving. I hope that you can spend your day with family. But if not, I hope uh, you can call them or Zoom or touch base in some way and that you have a lovely day either way. And I will see you again soon in the next video. Bye.